So Gary, who runs our help desk, just told me that the reason for nutgrass is you can take the nuts and you can roast them. This is what the Native Americans did in Illinois. You roast them and you make a paste out of them and it's almost like peanut butter. In Georgetown at Williamson County, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, master gardeners experiment, teach, and demonstrate how to grow. As community outreach gardeners, they promote earth kind techniques from food to flowers. Everything you see and everything we do is done by volunteers who have completed our basic training. We used to live in Dallas, so we had different soil there, and now I'm in Austin and I'm like, go in the ground and it's rocks, so what do I do? So, you know, you have to have raised beds here and it's things like that that I had to learn, like start over learning. I'm from Minnesota most recently, so it's totally different gardening there. So um, I get advice from all the rest of the volunteers on what we should plant next and when we should plant it. The uh, lettuce has all gone to seed, it's bolted, and um, so we take this out that we're not using and we take it to our compost uh, pile. Tomatoes are susceptible to early blight and it's a soil-borne disease. And so we try to lift the vegetation up off the ground so that when the rain hits it, it doesn't splatter the soil up onto the leaves. So just kind of thinning, thinning things out a little. These are pretty unruly Juliet's. We do the demonstration gardens, one for us to learn, and we share with each other what we learn, because we're all the time learning something new. There's a new bug we see or something. And then one of the things that we're doing is we have the public come out and we give tours of our garden, and we show them how to garden. And that's one of the reasons that we have like the raised bed area, the row garden, the keyhole garden, the gardens in the containers. Keyhole is an, a concept that is supposed to reduce the need for watering. The idea is that the center is basically a compost pile, the, the mesh center. If you do it right, the compost has enough moisture that you do not have to water very much at all. We began building it with cardboard. It's about a foot and a half of just plain cardboard in it, and then uh, tree, brush, leaves, grass, and finally, uh, compost and mulch on top of that. The keyhole concept is a way to get in to put things into the compost and to be able to reach better into the harvest. Cinder block, it's inexpensive and you can just throw up a garden very quickly and then uh, you have a raised bed. So the mistake that we made with this one is that it's a little bit too wide to get to the plants that are in the middle. To support climbers, they use a post hole digger to install T-posts. Zip ties anchor sturdy cattle panel, and it's very secure. A raised wooden bed allows wheelchair access. It's also a lesson for anyone who grows in shallow soil. Everything gets really dry in there, so you need a lot more supplemental watering. The master gardeners also test plants for Texas A&M. Edible fragment herbs line the earth kind herb field trials. There three different types of herbs and approximately four to five different sets of the same plant. We tend the plants but don't do anything to assist them, no fertilizing, nothing like that. And we had them all sized the same as the other two sites that they're doing this at. Then we watch the growth, measure the growth, and um, report back. The rest of what you'll see in our herb garden are plants that we've supplemented when other plants have had to be dug out, or they're border plants that help protect the herbs a little bit from the wind. Right now we're just looking to see what survives our winters, what survives our summers with just very little water. Eventually they will determine from these three sets of plants which will be labeled earth kinds, which will be designated as the best to grow in our area. In the vegetable beds, four trial beds grow earth kind tomatoes, cucumbers, and okra. They're doing three different varieties of each of those plants and they're trying to determine which ones grow the best in our area. We grow things with no added pesticides, fertilizers, or anything. So when our vegetables go in the ground, when we first built, built the beds, we put in uh, four inches of compost into the soil, about four inches of soil, and work that in. And then we've uh, just amended it with um, compost. It has three to four inches of 
hardwood mulch on top of it, and that hardwood mulch breaks down into more compost and continually feeds the, feeds the soil. Not everything in the, the row garden is part of a, a test. So uh, most of the row garden is actually production for, um, and we donate the produce we get out of it to the Caring Place in Georgetown and the Annunciation Maternity Home, also in Georgetown. Part of their earth kind management is rotating crops each season. We never plant tomatoes where there was potatoes, and we try not to plant tomatoes where there were peppers, and we never plant tomatoes where there were tomatoes. The Earthkind Rose Garden flaunts repeat bloomers that don't guzzle water. We add no added fertilizers. We keep the hardwood mulch on them. We can weed them, you know, and that sort of thing. The Drought Tolerant Garden illustrates perennial design. I love the tropical things too, but learned really quickly out here that it's just too much work and it's just so much easier to start with something that's already happy here, does well here, and you don't have to baby. We don't grow plants from New England, for instance, in there. And so we want plants that'll do well in our area with minimal care and that will survive our water restrictions. They don't battle pests since natural insect predators maintain a healthy balance. But they do have lots of hummingbirds and insect pollinators. Desert Museum Palo Verde is blooming and is full of bees. It's, and we have uh, spiny lizards out here the other day. So we are, we're attracting quite a bit of wildlife. Master Gardener Steve Eccles breaks up the visual pace with intricate rock sculptures. Toads appreciate the architecture too. We're trying to keep the drought tolerant garden as natural as possible with just, you know, stones and mulch and plants. The gardens also demonstrate natural flood control. After last spring's heavy rains, we had a lot of flooding out there. And we started building berms, raising up the beds, and it made a huge difference. Many of the master gardeners learn propagation techniques at wholesale Joss Growers in Georgetown. Whether it's freezing cold or blazing hot, the Williamson County master gardeners log thousands of volunteer hours every year. Although the gardens are always open to the public, the master gardeners pass along their knowledge wherever they go. I was in a nursery in July buying a plant for myself and a gentleman came in and he said, I'm looking for pansies. And I said, well, sir, I don't work here but pansies. You don't buy here in the summer like you would because he was coming from uh, the San Francisco Bay Area and they grow them there at that time of year. So I was able to guide him in another direction. Thank you.